The doctoral program is, is extremely selective, so we're taking less than 10% of the applicants that apply each year, and we get a fantastic group of applicants from all over the world and from a huge range of disciplines that share an interest in the environment, but really range from the social sciences uh, through um, natural and physical sciences. Alder Kellerman is working at a, a really fascinating intersection between biological diversity of crops and food security. And it's an arena that we really don't know very much about, but we do know that um, diversity of crops is disappearing really fast all around the world in these developing countries. And at what consequence to people's health and their well-being? I'm interested in local and traditional crops and crop varieties. So things like the blue maize that, that comes from Mexico or those funny-shaped highland potatoes from the Andes. Um, and there's been a lot of concern over the last sort of 30 to 50 years that some of these older varieties that, that we call heirloom varieties in the states will be entirely lost because of, um, because of agricultural modernization. The big research question is how, how do some of these sort of traditional agricultural methods or these traditional foods, how do they play into household nutrition and food culture um, and sort of what part do they play and what women feed their families? So there, there's a tendency for people to look at issues around food and hunger as if they were mostly economic issues, but there are a lot of other factors that contribute to them. There are, there are culture, cultural and social and political factors, um, and those are the things I'm interested in in my research. What our doctoral students bring to the table, I think, is that they chose to go to an interdisciplinary program as opposed to a disciplinary program. All of them are exceedingly talented. They could have gotten into these programs, but they've chose a harder path. Um, they, they chose to interact with people who are doing work much different than them. Across the, the, any cohort in our class, you have economists, you have people working on biological diversity, sitting next to sociologists, and they feed off of each other. Uh, that makes them broader in their conception of these problems and I think more effective. Uh, I'm in the field of biogeochemistry, uh, but how that relates to me is I, I basically look at the chemistry of carbon, uh, how it moves through plants, through soils, and into water systems, and all the interacting uh, mechanisms in all of those systems, and how it changes carbon and moves it to the oceans. So David's uh, research is on the economy of carbon in rivers. And in essence, what he's showing is that um, there, the constitution and the amount of carbon that is coming out of these rivers is globally significant, and it's going to change the way we model the global circulation of carbon and the way that we forecast climate change. So what I do is I spend most of my time on a boat cruising this 12-mile stretch, and I have this really sophisticated sensor equipment that pumps water through, and it basically takes very intense photographs of the water where we can look at the molecular structure of the carbon instantaneously. And then we can also measure the concentration of CO2, and it's very concentrated. So you can sort of think of it as a river breathing. Uh, you have all the CO2 in the water, moving out into the atmosphere. And one of the really bit, uh, exciting parts of my research has shown that uh, these rivers breathe a lot of carbon. You know, they are a source of CO2, just like we breathe CO2, just like smoke stacks are you know, pumping out CO2. Uh, these rivers uh, emit CO2, and it's never really been factored into global models yet. Mercedes Bravo is doing tremendously important work on air pollution. Uh, essentially, she's taking forecasting of air pollution and the potential health consequences outside of the bounds of where people have looked before, especially into these rural populations where you have people who are tremendously vulnerable and where we don't have a lot of information. So we know there's air pollution in urban areas, and this is where we have our monitoring network. So this is where we have our data. So we are able to figure out what's happening in urban areas within reason. Um, but in rural areas, there's this sort of thought that, there, that pollution isn't a problem, that pollution levels aren't high. But there are still people that live in rural areas. There are still um, economic activities that happen in rural areas, agriculture and so on, things that can be affected by air pollution. And so my job is sort of to figure out what's happening in the rural areas um, what kind of pollutants are out there at what level. One of the most exciting parts of what I do, sort of particular to this project, this isn't sort of big picture, but rather little picture, is that um, with the area that the model um, covers, we're actually able to estimate health effects for an extra 50 million people than we would be um, just using the monitoring data. We have students studying really an enormous range of things. We have students who are uh, spending a lot of their time in China uh, understanding how um, this uh, 
emerging economy is dealing with environmental challenges as it's growing at such enormous rates. Um, we have students who are who are doing work that's going to help us much better understand the causes of and forecast the consequences of uh, climate change. Um, we have students that are trying to uh, understand how we can forestall extinction of species. Um, really a huge range of folks, um, many of them, uh, perhaps even most, end up working remotely from campus and many of those are working internationally. The doctoral program at the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies was just uh, reviewed by the National Research Council and we received a, a top rating. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, but as our, uh, the president of our university has said, um, these rankings uh, don't mean very much, but boy, it feels pretty nice.